Hi, everybody. Long time no see. Happy to be back here with Portland Cocktail Week's Distance Learning. My name is Corey James. I'm the brand ambassador for Montalobos and Ancho Reyes. And today we have an exciting session with the proprietor of Trash Collective, a bartender education and sustainability platform. But before I introduce her, today's session is sponsored by Montalobos Mezcal. And speaking of sustainability, did you know that Montalobos has been committed to sustainable farming practices since its inception in 2011? We have established partnerships to fully cultivate our varietals of agave, doing our part to avoid deforestation of these plants that have been on the earth for over 11 million years. They have developed such resiliency against all kinds of pests and predators, but the only ones that they don't have an immunity towards is us. Um, also, our mezcals are certified organic in three different countries, Mexico, USA, and the EU, avoiding the use of herbicides or pesticides to cultivate. And last but not least, currently we compost our vinyasa, which is the liquid waste left behind after distillation. We mix it with the fiber residues and compost it. Now, Campari has been hosting these modules on Tuesdays and Thursdays for several months now. As you know, we took a little bit of a break in there. Um, the talent is always amazing, as you also all already know. And today I'll be introducing you to my friend here momentarily. But first things first, please follow Campari Community on Instagram for more info on what our team is up to and PDXCW on Facebook and Instagram for more content just like this. Also, the collection of all of these videos are posted on the Facebook page as well as YouTube, so you can revisit there too. Um, and if you have any questions throughout the course, please throw them into the thread and we will adjust them. Now, finally, today we're discussing at-home cocktail kits and how cocktails at home have shifted our hospitality landscape. I'd like to introduce my guest to you. And like I mentioned before, she's the head of a bartender education and sustainability platform called The Trash Collective also owner and operator of Send and Negroni up in Canada and an owner of a to-go drinks company called Dolly Trolley Drinks, which is very relevant to the conversation today. Hi, Kelsey. How are you? Hi. So excited to be here. Oh, great. We're so excited to have you. I'm so happy to see you. Please tell us what we're going to be learning from you today. All right. So we're going to be uh, diving into the last year of my life pretty much. Um, when we had to close Supernova, our cocktail bar, um, we had to figure out how to make a living essentially during the pandemic. And I definitely made a lot of mistakes. Um, we had a lot of like opportunities to learn. Yeah. <laughs> um, trial by fire, I think you said. <laughs> yeah, trial by fire, pretty much. So um, I am going to share everything that I learned um, with y'all today. And I'm also going to share a little bit of insight into where I think this um, part of the drinks industry is going, because I don't think it's going to go um, go back to sleep once uh, people are vaccinated and it's safe to go out. I think that there is a little bit of a future. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a peek into what we're going to do next with Dolly Trolley Drinks. I just love that name. It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> a Dolly Trolley is actually a little cart. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it also um, is like down to drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I didn't even know. <laughs> oh, See, you're teaching me about. We also got uh, in December a cease and desist from Miss Parton herself. So we had Stop. to change the branding a little bit. So I'm going to tell you guys about that too. <laughs> I cannot wait. <laughs> yeah, so exciting. Um, okay, so I guess I'll launch straight into it. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, like Corey said, uh, please. Feel free to ask questions as we go through. I know I'm going to go through a lot of different topics um, from creatively, you know, trying to express yourself in bottled drinks and communicating that with your customers, um, making sure that, you know, things once they leave your hands and get into your guests' hands, um, that they get made properly um because that's we've i've got some stories i've got some stories let me tell you um and then i think the biggest thing with this is um 
your online presence because that is the there is no more street visibility there is no walk by traffic there is only your online presence and that is the only way that you're going to be able to sell drinks so we're going to be talking about that we're talking about branding as a huge component of that and then um costs and perceived value because you in this sort of online sphere unfortunately there is no quality checks um so we don't really know once um the drinks are being consumed whether people think they're good or not <laughs> um, unless they think they're bad and then that's when you get the feedback so we're <laughs> going to talk about all of those things and then we're going to finish up with just some like safety stability ingredients some some finding some ways to like still find your creativity within this sphere and then how to communicate that over uh, via menu writing so let's launch into it we can go to the next slide um before we get into all of the fun stuff, we're gonna go over the boring stuff. Um, so within each state and also up here in Canada, um, between province to province, obviously there are legalities and limitations. Let me tell you at the beginning of Dolly Trolley, we did not operate this legally. So <laughs> um, once we closed Supernova, we actually had the branding ready to go. We were looking at the United States and the UK and sort of seeing how bars were rolling out their RTD programs, their bottled cocktails. And we kind of saw, you know, which ones we really liked, which ones we kind of wanted to make sure that we were staying away from. And then um, we also saw that, you know, in some states you were allowed to uh, batch the alcohol in and in some you had to sell your bottle of spirit alongside a little mixer um, So for the first I would say two weeks until I started getting a lot of anxiety as to being like found out for doing this illegally <laughs> um, We did it illegally and I just want to um, <clears throat> Tell everybody that like that puts your license at risk. It puts other bars at risk. It's it's just like, it's and it's not a very nice way to live. <laughs> um, so two weeks, we shut it down. Um, we reopened it when, because um, at the beginning in Ontario, you couldn't even um, sell to go cocktails. You couldn't sell anything online um, that had alcohol in it. And so selling a $20, you know, jar at the time which is all we could get our hands on um of kind of like juice and syrup uh didn't really make a lot of sense and it didn't there wasn't a lot of perceived value so we had to shut it all down think about how we were going to do this properly and during that time fortunately uh the government of ontario said okay you can now sell drinks in their original containers that you purchased from the lcbo which is like the um i guess government monopoly. So just to give you guys a little bit of a background, there is one governing body in Ontario that sells everyone their alcohol. So you have to buy it through them. Um, so the limitation there was that we don't also get a um, licensee discount. So we were buying it at the same price as somebody on the street was buying it. Um, and then marking it up and selling it with alongside a mixer. So you can very much see how sales went. They were they were steering towards um, mixer only. Um, yeah. So we would sell either the spirit with the mixer or we'd sell the mixer mixer by itself. And what was happening was people were just buying the mixer. So we really quickly had to figure out how to make that mixer a make money um, and b have um, be able to hold up the dollar amount in sales that. Uh, just bu the buying a spirit and mixer would have been so you're looking at like a $90 kit versus a $20 kit We just had to make sure that we were doing the volume to figure that out. So I'm going to go into how we can tackle perceived value um, And I'm also going to speak to my experience of doing it fully batched and doing it um, spirit and mixer because we've done both I know that one's a lot easier one's a lot can be a lot prettier than the other but they are they both are viable um, um, businesses. So I'm going to give you some of my tips and tricks for that. Um, the second part of this is that we decided we were doing all of our own deliveries early on. So we we were doing like deliveries, I think three days a week. It was like Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Um, and we just take the orders and then, um, you know, get pals with cars to pull in favors and, and deliver them ourselves. Um, 
which worked at the beginning, um, but it definitely became a hindrance as we got busy, busier and busier. Um, there are a number of legalities around who can deliver alcohol. Um, up here in Canada, you have to be, you have to have your smart serve, which is like the um, kind of your bartending ticket that you get. Uh, it's just like a little online course, which I know is a thing in, in many of the United States as well. Um, so not only do you have to have that as a driver, so a lot of the bartenders that were out of work became delivery drivers. So paralleling, you know, getting friends to pull in favors, we also wanted to support other people that were trying to find work in the industry. So what we did was we found a courier service that a lot of these bartenders were working for. Um, and then uh, the cur courier services, um, I think about three or four months in, also had to get their own license. So that was another hurdle that we had to find courier service that was actually licensed to deliver alcohol and then that had employed drivers that had their license to serve. Um, so there was a number of hoops uh, to, to jump through, but once we found that courier, um, basically what we've done is through Shopify is just set it up so that we don't gain or lose money on the delivery service. It just goes, it gets passed straight onto the consumer. And I think that people, especially in a pandemic right now are, willing to spend that extra little bit on shipping. Um, there was a bit of a consideration whether we should do, you know, free shipping and same day shipping. Um, that for us was definitely a, uh, a no. Um, we did same day for a period of time and we did it during September or December when everything got crazy and, and delivery services were overloaded and it just became um, a logistical nightmare. Um, and what Sounds we got, like it. yeah, it was crazy. So <laughs> it was stressing me out. <laughs> yeah. It was like, we had this three hour window between like cutoff and when the delivery a driver picked up and when it was busy, it was just like, it was not scalable. Um, and so that's something that as you're, if you're thinking about, you know, starting an online business and setting this all up, you definitely have to think about scalability because there are going to be days where, you know, you get one, two trickle orders in, but the, then there's going to be this surprise Friday that you just have 20 orders and then one person in the prep room and you just haven't really prepared for it. So having that delivery service, giving yourself a six hour minimum window um, with, with delivery pickup is just going to be so, so necessary. Um, and also you don't gain or lose money on it. You know, offering free shipping uh, is something that, you know, a fully staffed Amazon type business can do. And it, you know, if it yeah. starts making sense, but when you, when you have, I'm going to go into some profit and loss as well. Um, when you're only making, you know, 50% profit on a kit, um, an $8 delivery fee does cut into your profit by about 50%. So when you think of all wow. of that as percentages, it just really starts adding up really, really quickly. So you have to be aware of, um, just like you would in a bar, you know, you, you know what your percentage rent is, you know what your percentage labor is. So you, it's just it's just another it's just another aspect that, you know, some people sometimes people don't think of as would be a nice thing to offer for free, but um, really starts adding up really quickly. Um, all right. Numbers, so the last numbers, 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 numbers. Totally. I know. I know. I'm, such, I'm like a spreadsheet no, person. No, but these are all, this is also important. Uh, obviously, I mean, you don't you want to make money, not lose it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like this is we're in this to like get through the pandemic, right? Um, yeah. yeah. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is Shopify audits, because I definitely didn't see this one coming. You know, nobody in the industry had talked about it yet. Um, what happens when you set, set up your Shopify shop? Um, you give them your your liquor license number, you give them, you know, you tell them all of the details about your business. And their Shopify is very good about you know, being able to set that up immediately. But when you are a new business and Shopify doesn't necessarily know you, they will conduct an audit usually within the first three months of your business. And what that means is that they will say, we are no longer giving you your payments. So they'll put a hold on your money. Um, this happened in the second week of December when we were extremely busy. And luckily I had enough in the bank to get us through those three weeks. Um, but they, I think they initially said it would be 10 business days and it wound up taking till nearly the end of December and it really, really hurt cash flow. Um, wow. So just be prepared for when Shopify sends you that email being like, hey, we're just gonna look through all of your paperwork and make sure that it, it lines up. Um, 
you need to be prepared to to have that little bit of money in the bank and also make sure that all of your documentation is slick answer that email right away uh they're really really friendly but like do have everything ready to go for when that email comes through and all that means is like a copy of the liquor license or the liquor license of the establishment that you are batching from and then uh your agreement with your delivery driver and their license um there you go keep it together yeah <laughs> <laughs> organize organize your life <laughs> yeah you just want to get to want to be ready this isn't like a, a slap up a website and sell stuff this is like get ready it's coming yeah um, we can go to the next slide um okay cool so i have done both of these things um like i mentioned earlier so when you're doing like uh, a spirit bottle and a mixer on the side um it's very easy for that to start adding up uh really really quickly so it brings you into the land of a luxury item, which cocktails are anyways. This is not like a necessary service. This is you know, necessi necessary for us, but maybe, <laughs> you know, it's it's something that is a luxury item. So people are actually going to compare um, your items to other things that, first of all, other things that you're getting in the mail and also things that they have available at the grocery store that they're buying. So the dichotomy of these things is that one of them is expensive and they're willing to pay a lot for packaging and online stuff. And the second one is that it's pretty cheap and accessible and they're getting it as uh, alongside necessary items in a grocery store, right? So these are the two things that people have coming into their homes during a full lockdown um, that they're going to be comparing your product to. So when you're getting something that's like a spirit bottle and a little mixer, you want to make sure that you have enough other stuff um, in your packaging so that it looks super slick and it does look like a luxury item. So you're not just set like, I think the the comparison that I always make is that when you go to like Whole Foods and you buy a little jar of smoothie and it costs you like $12, sometimes people compare that to a cocktail mixer, which is gonna be approximately the same size, but usually around 20 to $25. Um, so I've included this really cute little uh, kit that's available from Cocktail Emporium. Um, all of these are, are like syrups and and like acidifiers that you pour soda and spirit into um, so they are little cocktail mixers this whole kit is like forty dollars um, it comes with five different drinks i think they serve like three each but you could just see how if you got that into your home and you paid forty dollars for that how that would be like it's it's pretty incredible branding and it just it looks beautiful yeah that's what i was just gonna say that looks like like if i paid 40 dollars for that i wouldn't be mad it's a beautiful package everything is laid out the the branding is amazing 40 bucks i'll i'll buy it right now <laughs> yeah and the thing is that they're not you know they're not reinventing the wheel here you've got like uh, a spritz uh, i think you've got a moscow mule there's an old-fashioned in there which we all know is like syrup and bitters like yeah. You know, the contents are simple, they're basic, they're easy to read, and the instructions on the back were like um, super, super simple, which I'm gonna go into as well, because by the time, when you get this kit in your in somebody's home, the, the other part of that is that they wanna make sure that they're not taking the old fashioned jar and pouring it into a spritz. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> these things can happen, and who are they gonna blame? They're gonna blame the person that delivered the kits, not you know not that they're not going to realize that they've they've messed something up so yeah, put pictures on the front i guess yeah. <laughs> so you know what you're doing <laughs> make it <Yeah>. real easy <laughs> make it super super easy like never send anything out without a sticker yeah um, and it also tells you that like you know something as simple as a daiquiri that's just like uh syrup and and citrus is still possible you can still um you can still send these things out even when you're sending it alongside um a spirit um, so what I did a lot because these cans, I think each of these cans are like at least a hundred milliliters. Um, so what I started doing was adding in fermentables, not only to add length, um, but to add an alternate acidity other than lemon or lime juice, because lemon and lime juice get super expensive. Um, especially when you're having to sell like a full, you know, I guess it was 250 mil bottle is what I'm doing now, but that that's alongside like an eight serving kit. Um, so if you're selling like two to three servings at a time, which is what we were doing in the beginning, um, 
those the cost of the lemons versus like how many drinks we were making became an exponentially larger than just being in a bar. So we had to turn to things like Verju is a really, really great one because it's been bottled and it's shelf stable. You can add it into certain things and it's not gonna like reignite the ferment. And then you're not gonna have like some exploding bottle uh, situation on your hands. Um, and the other things I used were kombucha and I used a little bit of tapache. So what they do is like they add this complexity in a non-alcoholic uh, cocktail mixer. You have to be careful with fermentables sometimes they will start um to create their own like small level of alcohol you're gonna like one two percent um so you're just gonna want to make sure that you communicate that to your guests that sometimes these things are fermented and you know not recommended for people who aren't drinking uh, but they do go a long way in adding another level of complexity another a different way of getting acidity um without being like this short, tight, small amount, you can add like, you can then add a full ounce or two ounces to the cocktail to, to finish it off. Um, and then, yeah, so that the last thing that I would do with a fermentable, if I'm putting it in, in something like, uh, if I'm adding it to something citric, or if I'm adding it to something without alcohol, that doesn't have the ability to arrest the fermentation. Um, or possibly start it again in the case of sugar, you want to be very careful of that, um, I would just pasteurize it. So chuck it in a sous vide bag, um, throw it on at 60 degrees for like half an hour, and you'll be good to go. It'll kill anything that's going on in there uh, safely. Um, <laughs> uh, and then the other things that I like doing is adding multiple bottles to add value. So we do like a little, um, and Uline is great for packaging. You can buy a little like boxes that hold three of your bottles perfectly and you can do a mix and match pack and it's a really good like way to add you know get it, getting people to add on you know buying three of your cocktails instead of just buying one and then the perceived value when they get it into their home is a lot greater and you see the one that's up on the screen here it's got five and it's for forty dollars as opposed to charging like 15 for one um just makes a lot more sense um, and also if you have one box versus having three different boxes, the cost of the box usually will only vary by about 30 cents, whether you're getting one for one or one for five, um, versus the cost of like sending a box and all of the packaging and stickers anyways. Um, it is much more cost effective to send five at a time than it is to send one at a time, um, especially when you calculate in the cost of shipping. Um, it'll be approximately the same, especially with courier service. So you're really going to want to try and get people to buy more than one because once they get it into their house, they're going to think it's a lot nicer. Even though yeah, well, <laughs> that should be what that should be the first thing. Get them to buy more. <laughs> yeah, get them to buy more yeah, things. Like, That's also yeah, great. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but the cost for you is uh, is a, is a lot less if you can get them to do that as well. Um, and then any little extras that you can pop in the box. We do a little bit of little bag of like really cute carnival popcorn that we've got in like a popcorn, like a traditional popcorn bag that you get a little carnival. Um, a custom note card, you know bottle stickers that are like this one different for each skew. We've got another sticker that goes on the outside of the box. We've got stickers for our lemon and lime juice. I'm going to show you guys all of the um, branding that we've got in a second, but any kind of things that you can think of, all of these things cost like 50 cents a piece. Um, they'll cost you like a hundred bucks to get designed. Um, once your main branding is done, the main branding is going to take a little bit more than that. Um, but it just it all of these little bits and pieces really contribute to the whole experience once the person gets the box into their house. So I can go to the next one. Um, right. So online presence. I actually spent I, I was writing this slide and I spent last night. I was like, oh, God, I haven't checked Dolly Trolley's SEO in a long time. OK, what does that mean? <laughs> um, as a bit of a Luddite and not very good tech person, I'm a very good numbers person, I'm not very good tech person. Um, <laughs> Literally, I uh, so I had to learn how to edit a website's SEO. And what that means is just when you go into a Google search and you can pay companies to do this, usually they take a lot of your money. Um, you can pay companies to have a look at your Shopify website and um, edit uh, the SEO. So that basically what it means is that you're adding in the right keywords to both your photos, uh, your descriptions, your main, um, website menu so that when it comes up in a Google search, those keywords that are searched 
uh, pick up on your website so that by area you get um, in the top. Unfortunately, right now I'm, oh, sorry, Corey. No, I was just gonna say, so it's kind of like hashtags. I mean, you're just tagging things exactly. so, that, so that you can get searched like cocktail, drink, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, the one thing you want to make sure that you are doing, though, is speaking in full sentences. So it is definitely like hashtags, like the Google search will pick up tags in your sentence. But when wow. it comes up and it just comes up as a list, it will think that you're a bot. Um, so you want to wow. make sure. And it looks a lot nicer when you so search something on Google and then you can read the first couple of lines before you click on it, right? Just as a consumer. I see. Um, yeah, so you want to make sure that you're just, you know, speaking in full sentences, um, make the verbiage sound really nice, um, please enjoy, all that kind of stuff, like the same thing that you would say in a bar, this is your way of communicating now. Um, so that's, that's all being said, like you can do as much as you want. Sometimes SEOs can be very, very frustrating if you don't want to pay somebody to do them, like myself, I don't have that kind of money. Um, there is still like five or six or seven or 10 uh, paid Google ads that come up on top of the top SEO. Um, and then because there are so many articles about um, online cocktails right now, because it's a huge, obviously a trending thing, yeah. um, is that the articles will actually come up before your actual website. <laughs> so wow. sometimes even though your SEO might really be really good, you're still going to be on the second page of stuff. Um, so if Google ads are, are something that you want to do, great. Um, the best free advertising that I've had and every time that we get a, are lucky enough to get um, a media reach out or like get popped into a top 10, you know, to go drinks in Toronto, it helps sales exponentially. So like those, that's the best free. If you know anybody in your area that you can send kits to, you know, do those reach outs the same as you would when you're launching a new menu at a bar. Um, you know, you, you do the marketing night, you, you bring, you bring your friends down, you bring uh, members of the industry down that, you know, might write about you. That's it's the same, same, same damn thing, except for it's, it's free. And, it, and, and usually right now, especially um, media want to help us. They really, really do. They want to see, see us succeed. They want to see bars stay open. So it, it is a really, really good time for, for local media. Um, IG marketing. Um, I'm just going to talk about this real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one, this is going to be a doozy. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot, right? It's super easy to go in and do a sponsored ad on Instagram. Um, I have done it in two different ways. So I have send a Negroni, which is, uh, it's not my company. It's, uh, it's, uh, done by Alex Lawrence and Ben from Langston Liquor in the UK, but I just operate the Canadian version. Their marketing and Dolly Trolley's marketing are done very, very differently. Um, so basically what Sendin Negroni does is pay a um, marketing company to do targeted advertising. Um, this, I will just say, is so, so, it's so effective. Um, it is not a waste of money. However, it is extremely expensive. I think that it is, and I think that most of them are, it's not just the company that they're using. It's about $20,000 a year for a retainer. And then you pay for your, um, your local targets by area. But because they're operating in several different countries, it makes sense for them to pay the retainer and then um, be able to target ads to both, you know, Canada, the UK, whatever countries they are they are marketing to. It makes a lot of sense for them. Um, with Dolly Trolley, we do a couple of sponsored ads every once in a while. Sometimes we'll give a kit out to a local influencer. Um, this is like medium effective. <laughs> um, and you have I to pay for those, don't you? You pay for those through influencers, unless it's a friend. Uh, yeah, unless it's a friend. Um, yeah. But there is like there is a lot of opportunity actually with spirits brands um, because they are because they aren't doing as many you know in person activations. Um, they're also looking a lot of times for to, to ways to help out the bars and the partnerships that they have. Um, so it's yeah, it's obviously like brand and, and bar relationships have always been really closely knit and very tight, but this is like a really good time and a good opportunity to reach out and be like, Hey, I need some help with a, an Instagram ad here or there. And they might, you know, they might 
be. Um, uh, yeah, use your advantages. Try not to spend money first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and also Instagram ads aren't that expensive. Um, yeah, I, I find that more they they get your word out. They don't necessarily equate to sales as much as targeted paid um, advertising, like Send a Negroni does, uh, where that equates to sales. The Instagram ads are more to like build followership um, and get so get get your Instagram looking real slick before you sponsor an ad. You don't want to have this like hot mess of like a whole bunch of different things. If you can get like six really slick looking Instagram posts up and then sponsor like the second one so that people have a minute to scroll through. They can see what's going on. They can even see if you want to launch your whole menu and then they can see every single one. Um, that's when it becomes worth it rather than just like, okay, we're ready to go. Let's sponsor a post. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of like, that's where my budgeting is at for, for online presence. I hope that kind of explains absolutely what i do <laughs> no questions yet it means you're <laughs> things are clear <laughs> hopefully <laughs> uh all right we can go to the next slide uh yay branding i've seen so many cute bottles going out um i am just going to pull up a couple of notes on this and branding is so so important um so at the beginning of our stuff we paid a person called kasira hill to do a little dolly logo and she has since in january done a complete rebrand for us so she did um if you look at the little picture on the left that's the dolly trolley drinks logo and then so she created the the logo on the outside and then the branding in the middle so we can actually go in and change the wording as we change the drink so that we don't have to go back and bother a bother her every time um and then we've just paid for the license to use um this brand on on all of our stuff so it does get it does get expensive i'm just going to tell you guys right now um especially if you're printing like 20 30 stickers at a time to do on um to each different skew for your bottles um that's where it does get a little bit expensive and i have seen like a couple of places in uh new york that print one sticker that looks kind of sim like a similar format to the group machine one that you see here, but then they can write it in themselves and it still looks really cute. It's still part of their branding. They have that kind of like homey, sort of like homemade kind of thing going on and it's really slick part of their branding, but it also saves them a bunch of money because they can print to like a thousand stickers at a time, use it over all of every single one of your SKUs. And that means the cost of the sticker goes down to like, you know, 17 cents versus like a dollar, which is what yeah. ours are. Um, so that's important. We made the conscious like branding choice be just because we wanted everything to look very 70s and super slick to print them separately. Um, but it is a bit of a bitch to manage. I will say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I feel like, I mean, people also, I mean, they, they always tell you when you start bartending, people drink with their eyes too. So it's the same thing as if you were in a bar and you had a, a brightly colored cocktail or a beautiful garnish. You're like, oh, I want that when you see it go by on a tray. Same here. Like when I look at this, I'm like, can I please have that? <laughs> <laughs> well, glad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that that's definitely been important. And then the second part of that, like you said, is photography. Um, so we didn't actually pay anybody to do photography. I was kind of dabbling around. I have a nice camera. So I started doing um, the photography for uh, the Dolly Trolley website. Um, it was definitely a learning curve. There were some really ugly pictures at the beginning. Um, these are filtered as F. Um, <laughs> so like, just know that, you know, if you're not like snapping perfect pictures, you don't have the, you know, the iPhone 12 and you can't spank a grand or whatever it is now on those things. Um, <laughs> that like it's it's okay to have that learning curve and, and to be able to thankfully we have things like canva which is how i made this presentation um and a lot of like different filtering apps that you just like slap that on and make your pictures look nice um and yeah so that's that's kind of been like the biggest things for dolly trolley branding i wanted to just mention the one in the middle crybaby uh gallery which who has done the Pretty much the same but different pantones for each one of their bottles they look so so cute everything is like that simplistic kind of branding is um it just looks so beautiful and it's easy to execute and you don't have to you know do a whole 
bunch to the bottle. Like they just look very, very slick. Um, so that was just a really good example of like kind of not the opposite of Dolly Trolley's branding, but very, very different like um, path to take. Um, and then this last one is from Trick Dog and they've done such a cute little tamper proof topping. Um, they've listed exactly what's in the, in the bottle on the, on the front. And then they've done the two part, um, two part label. So that's another kind of option that you can do. Whereas Dolly Trolley, we put, um, the groove machine on the front and then it'll have a separate label with ingredients on the back. Uh, Trick Dog has put the Trick Dog logo and then just change the bottom label that has the list of ingredients. So that's another kind of like smart little, very cute branding cost saving tip um, that, you, that you can kind of use. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's that for branding. So we can move on to the next slide. <laughs> um, I love it. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> a big part of uh, another big part of this is uh, literally communication and making sure that you're telling people that it's fresh lime, fresh lemon. Kisira also did this, all, all of this stuff for us. This is the, the middle ones, the sticker that goes on the outside of the box. I also do it for Dolly Trolley Customs. So people can kind of go on, they can order sort of based on somebody's personal preferences. So it's kind of getting like a, a cocktail in a bar. If they were just say, hey, I kind of like tequila, you know, I had, went on vacation last year, blah, 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 like that kind of stuff. Um, that's kind of an opportunity where um, we're very, very clear that it takes like two to three days so that you've got a little bit of lead time. You can plan ahead if you need to do any prep. Um, but then they get this like standard Dolly Trolley drinks label on the outside. And then I kind of explain in the little card. And it's just it's something that's very, very personal because branding is the, really the only way that you can get you can contribute. You can kind of convey your um, your ambiance to your home consumer. So they get they get the Dolly Trolley box, you know, you've got like either colored tissue or sometimes I do this like really tiki looking uh, tissue from, it's called Eco Enclose. Um, that's like, it's, it's made of like recycled cardboard or something like that. And it's very, very cheap. It's like $20 a box. Um, and I think it's distributed. If I can get it here in Canada, I'm pretty sure y'all can. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's just like, but between the branding on the bottle, we've got a little note card that they can leave if it's a, it's a gift. And believe me, online drinks are like all gifts. Uh, they can leave a little note to their friends and then you have your like fresh lime, fresh lemon, and then you have a slick as hell little garnish that comes in, you know, we've got ours in a little white bag that has, you know, the Dolly trolley stamp on the outside and then your little popcorn bag or whatever. If you want to add a snack, you can, if you don't, you don't have to. Um, I think legally in Canada, we have to offer one. So we wanted to make sure that everything in that box is like bright and fun and playful so that, you know, it's almost like disco is playing in the background. You know what I mean? Yeah, you've achieved it. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's just it's just a nice way to be able to convey like what you're doing to 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 the person at home. And we could go to the next one. All right. This is okay. I don't know if y'all can see this. So I just wanted to like give you a quick snapshot of like what costs actually are. So when um when you look at the a paper plane, for example, okay? This first line here is, you probably can't see my cursor. <laughs> Just kidding. So the spec, underneath the spec is what the individual drink would be. For a 10 liter batch, this is what the spec would be. And then you want to, what I've done to, to like figure out my costing is how many serves are in a bottle um, so that I can just times the spec by the number of serves. And then for a 500 mil bottle, this is how many mils I'm getting. And I know that y'all work in ounces, but I cannot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, so when I look at the bottle, the product cost here, you know, that's about $28. Um, before lemon juice and lemon juice. I know that a, a 250 mil bottle plus the bottle costs about $3 and 75 cents. So if that's your product only um, for six to seven serves, um, you're then going to look over. So that, keep in mind, this is like $28. On the left, underneath package cost, we're looking at a box. That's a Uline box. Obviously, this is all in Canadian. So it'd be like, you know, 15% less for um, for us dollars, the bottles, uh, this is like, um, 
the main 500 ml bottle plus a smaller bottle of whatever mix of uh, whatever citrus it is. Um, your labels, outside labels, inside labels um, on the bottle itself, sticker for the outside, kit card, tissue inside, popcorn, that all comes to $8. Now, it comes to $8 whether you're doing a 500 ml bottle or a 250 ml bottle. So this is why we made the choice to uh, do slightly larger format, charge a little bit more because we can't be adding eight dollars cost onto something that is only doing two to three serves it just didn't make much sense we wanted to make sure that the cost versus value made sense for the the person when they when they get the box into the home so you can kind of see that like adding eight dollars onto a single bottle every single time is like a lot right did you um, have any did you have any times where you were buying another brand that was more expensive and then changed to a uh, a, a less expensive brand of bottles or boxes or anything where you were just like, this isn't working. Um, yeah, actually, you know what <laughs> happened? This is, that's such a good question because <laughs> I was doing these like cutesy little Mason jars for canning because yeah. they were super cheap. They were like a dollar, uh, they were a dollar each. Yeah. Um, and then all of Ontario sold out of these cans cause like everyone oh. was canning. Yeah. Like grandmas were up in their houses, you know, <laughs> canning what was it, whatever was left Pickle. of the season. Yeah. <laughs> um, so like Ontario ran out of jars. Um, and we had to find a different solution. So what and, and what that meant was that I had to scale up. I had to yeah. do like a 200 bottle minimum order or something like that, which if I would have thought of that in the beginning, I would have been like, oh my God, I can't afford that. But as you know, as our branding grew and everything was going in that direction, it was like, okay, just bite the bullet and figure it out. And then December happened and it exploded. Um, so it was, it ended up being really worth it. So if you yeah. can afford to get like, and also you have more control of your branding that way, you know, you were, I wasn't trying to like constantly source these little jars. I could be like, okay, what makes most sense size wise for the brand? What bottle? And then we ended up doing the Boston bottles because they looked super cute. So it was just yeah. like you had so many more choices by going to, we, we went to consolidated bottle. I believe that there's a US arm of that and I can't remember the name of it. Berlin yeah. packaging, maybe. Yeah, that sounds familiar. I mean, yeah. I've definitely gotten Boston rounds from a company that sounds similar to that. So it might be the same one. Yeah, so it was definitely um, it was a good move. Um, but yeah, if you go like over to the percent profit on the end, and we know that like profit, like gross profit in um, a bar when we're talking about just the spirit and just the product itself is like so much more than 40%. It's yeah. um yeah, it's like we were with, you know, before we were like in the 70 range, right? Yeah. Um, so this is like this is kind of like a reality check that y'all were not making 70% no more. <laughs> 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 um, and then the final little add-on that just like this isn't calculated here, this is just strictly product. Um, yeah. is that Shopify and processing, similar to like your um, it's probably not Moneris there, but like your your POS systems are gonna take um, two to three percent, depending on where you are, um, but that is of the taxed tip total. So it's not of your like, say you're. I guess most places in the U.S. include tax in their final number. We don't. Um, so like the cost of the bottle is sixty five, and then we add a thirteen percent tax because tax is crazy up here. Mm -hmm. um, so Shopify is taking three percent of that. So when you think about it as sixty five dollars, it's actually like if $65 would have been 2% with tax, it's going to be 3%. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's the numbers out of the way. You are really good at numbers. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yep, that makes sense. But that really just went right over my head. So. Okay. <laughs> We're not getting not, any questions I am yet. not good at numbers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but end number, the percent profit, that that makes sense for everybody. Of course, I think. of course, okay. of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can we can go to the next slide. Uh, so this is a really beautiful kit that was not produced by me. Um, I didn't do Christmas. Well, I did Christmas e kits this year, but not to this level. Um, this one was produced by Miracle Toronto, and they spent a lot of money running into it. I don't think they were doing to go kits before. Um, and then when they did Miracle, they were like, okay, we are doing the to-go kits to like 
and all to go kids. And they did these, this, they hired a photographer. They spent a lot of money, obviously on packaging. It looked super beautiful. Um, and this is something that I did as well over Christmas. I added little like dingly balls into the box and like in and around just to make everything look really beautiful um, online. Make sure that your things that you're adding to decorate are obviously not part of the kit. Um, and that's kind of why you see, <laughs> oh, no. yeah, that's kind of why you see, you know, the disclaimer at the bottom of some ads, X, Y, Z is not included in the actual kit. Um, I don't know. They might've been totally fine with this, but I know that we just, we definitely got a couple of little reach outs being like, Hey, just so you know, I was expecting X, Y, Z in the kit and I didn't receive it. And it's just kind of like, it's really heartbreaking to like, read that about your kits when you think that they're just like branded and beautiful and stunning. And then you're like, Oh shit, I under delivered. <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh man. Yeah. Bummer. Um, so like I said earlier, cocktail kits are a luxury item. They're comparing this to like your fit fab fun box that you're getting in the mail, you know, with all of that packaging. Um, this is like kind of, it looks similar. So people are going to, you know, and, and it's about the, it's a similar price. Um, price range. So you want to make sure that like these kits um, look like they're supposed to look online. And then once they arrive at person's doorstep, have the exact same packaging that you, um, that you communicated online. Um, and usually what I do uh, inside uh, on the actual web page is just have a photo of a list of all of the things that are inside the kit so that, so that people, people don't think they're getting, Christmas ornaments and things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You always want to make sure that when the kit comes that they were expecting something, and then you're over delivering. As it's, it's, it's the same thing as as like bar service. I, I always like yeah. relating this back to like you know you're managing their expectations. So, in all of in most of our um, online content, we just uh, show a picture of the bottle and a picture of the cocktail because really, that's what we're selling. Yeah. Um. We don't need to have a photo. I think the kits when there's photos of the kits online personally for our branding it starts to look messy because there's so many components so we do like to keep it really simple we are selling cocktails we're not selling anything else <laughs> <laughs> and then when other stuff comes they're like oh sweet this is cool yeah 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 there's um a, there's a few questions um yeah. first one how did you decide on your business name we'll start there and then i'll go to the next one um, I am, well, first of all, it couldn't be called supernova because it was illegal in the start. So we had to think of something else. Um, <laughs> I'm a big Dolly, Dolly, uh, Parton fan. Yep. Um, and then Ian came up with this idea. Cause I think it's a UK thing that a Dolly trolley is actually this little cart that comes around to like hotel rooms and, and makes drinks, you know, um, like, door, like a martini cart kind of. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we wanted to have that, like convey that we were home delivered uh kind of like homemade very like cozy sort of comforting stuff because yeah. it was a very panicky time so that was how we came up with dolly trolley it's such a, i mean it's just such a good name and if you don't like dolly parton sign off right now yeah <laughs> get up out of here <laughs> uh next question what what do you see is the staying power for at-home drinks post-pandemic? Will it have a major role or just a supplemental role? Uh, and also, do you think businesses focusing on at-home will grow? Or is this just a bit of a bubble because of COVID? Um, I think there's two parts of that. I definitely know that when we ran into summer last year, that sales went from like 20 kits a day to like a trickle, like literally oh. one or two. So I am preparing myself for that now that as soon as people can go outside that they're going to, that they, yeah, that like this actually happened. So there's a very good example of this. This happened in Ontario two weeks ago. Um, patio service opened back up again and people could go out and literally our sales dropped off immediately. So I am going to say that um, I don't think that there is a ton of staying power with the online ordering and then to go cocktail kits. However, I do think people have upped their home bar game. They've learned a lot through these like online masterclasses and things like that. Um, so that if I think the biggest thing that online cocktail kits has done is allowed us to establish a brand and a foothold in the online um, 
drinks business. So I think I've learned a lot from that. And what we're going to start seeing is that um, in order to um, keep our brand, you know, a part of the vernacular, not just on like a Saturday night or Friday night where they're like, oh, we should go here um, to keep it kind of in people's minds is that this is just a it's a branding opportunity. And it's it's something that we you know, we need to figure out how to um, keep at home drinkers like taking home a bottle at the end of the night is something like a, a little bit of a value add that still carries along the brand of your bar that people can be reminded of when they open the fridge kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah so it will continue in that kind of sphere is like taking something away or giving something somebody something to go home with which previously here was illegal and hopefully we see that it continues to be legal because it's just such a cute little touch to be able to like hey i got you some cold brew with a little bit of like amaro in it for the morning take it home please um so that that's an opportunity um and i'm going to touch on the next phase of dolly trolley because i do think that we are into a uh, trouble zone when stuff opens up for this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i mean everything's starting to open up here and i know that people are doing less and less like at home cocktail delivery yeah unfortunately mm -hmm. um we could go to the next slide uh did i yeah. Yes. Okay. There we go. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got so confused. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to tell you all a little story because this is this is like how I started communicating ex in ex uh, expiry dates. Um, up until I guess September, we were operating under the assumption that people thought of to go cocktails as a takeout item, similar as you would food, right? It was on Uber Eats. Then we were. Then we moved on to websites because it was cheaper. Um, and then we started doing next day delivery. Okay, so we've slowly moved from the realm of takeout food to something that they might um, attribute as like a grocery store item, which might have a little bit further of like the two to three, hopefully not three day, but next day. You know, uh, the takeout food is still good. Um, and how I figured this out was uh, somebody who had, she emailed in December. So in, on Halloween, this is how I knew we, we did this huge Halloween sort of line of drinks. Um, and somebody had bought her the full lineup um, for, uh, I think it was her birthday or for Halloween or something. In December, she emailed me and she said, hey, I've got these in the back of my fridge, but I don't see the videos online anymore. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you what? <laughs> <laughs> um, and she was like, yeah, you know, I just had a kid. I, I just didn't have time to have the drinks. I was like, I understand all of that. Yeah. Um, but other people might be doing this, you know? And it's it wasn't just like her safety I was worried about. It was also like, these drinks are going to taste horrible. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it very quickly became a thing where I was like, okay, we need to communicate expiry dates. We need to communicate best buy dates. And we need to communicate like, what exactly lemon juice is, because it is not this stuff. <laughs> um, and when people see this, this is what some people use in their at-home cocktails, because they just don't know the value of fresh lemon juice. And they think that like lemon juice can sit on the counter at room temperature for like, you know, three weeks, which is like, obviously we all know that that's not a thing, that it can be frozen, that it's just like, like, no. Yeah. Um, and that's I have 100% sent my husband to the store to get fresh lemon juice and he's come back with this. And I'm like, this is not it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like, this is a, this is the grocery store, you know, teaching people that this is acceptable, yeah. you know, and we all, totally. we know that this is not, no. um, <laughs> In addition to like fermented ingredients and so like bags exploding, which I'm so shocked that they, I think they had alcohol in them. So it was just, it was a little bit more stable, but yeah. Um, so yeah, so I started not only communicating it online. Um, so it's part of the website. It says, you know, this is the, all of our drink mixers are good for one month. The, the lemon juice is good for three days. And then we put it on the bottle and then we put it on the how to video. So there is no point that somebody's going to miss the expiry date. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other part is that people don't know that these things need to be refrigerated. Um, they will, you know, they buy spirit from the liquor store. They think that this is the same um, and they will leave it on their counter 
at room temp. So just make sure that you're saying, please refrigerate. Yeah, basically, you just have to assume that everyone is a dummy. <laughs> Yeah, 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 kind of. <laughs> yeah, you, you really do. It's just, it's just yeah. like over communicate the most. You, you think it's basic. You think, you know, you might make somebody feel stupid. It's yeah. better off, you know, having them have a delicious yeah. drink than having some shit that's been sitting on there. Absolutely, safety counter. first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we can go to the next slide. Cool. Um, all right, this is a little little story. I know that I'm going over time here, but um, so naming drinks used to be the most difficult part of menu writing for me. I, I really, really struggled them, with them. I've, I've gotten to a point where I go on like Jeffrey Starr's website and I look up his lipstick colors and those are my drink names, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I always name my drinks after songs. <laughs> oh, that's so good. That's so much better than mine. Um, <laughs> uh, but what we were doing was like, uh, just naming something, for example, like a pink flamingo, okay, um, versus naming it like a raspberry sour. Yeah. Um, and what happened was I literally had a drink up, I think it was called like a Cedar Vale Gimlet. That was it. Um, and it wasn't selling that well, even though gin sours are a huge thing in Toronto. I think like, like gin snappy not too sweet is like the bar call right yeah. um so we kind of figured this out i was like i wonder if people just don't know what a gimlet is and then i changed the same name so it was like the cedar vale gin sour and like sales went up exponentially i was like oh i've, I've unlocked a secret here yeah. um yeah so calling it like a negroni or an old-fashioned or something that's like kind of simple that that people understand and can relate it to they're not you know they're not in your bar you know ex you're not able to explain why the thing tastes like fermented carrot cake you know what i mean so like listing those weird ingredients where it's like clove carrot you know fermented whey blah 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 like all of those things that were in the supernova menu i was like mm -mm, that's not going to work online we've got to figure out a way to communicate like really beautiful flavors in a way that people can understand yeah i mean that's like a lot of times uh working in certain bars the menu would be so complicated and it intimidates people when they walk up to the bar and they're looking at your menu and they don't know what any of the ingredients are in the cocktail and then you're constantly explaining it to them but you're not there at their house <laughs> you know exactly <laughs> yeah yeah so keep it simple like keep the keep the language like understandable just use fruit names instead of um instead of fermented xyz i mean go ahead and ferment stuff like do the thing um but just make sure that they understand you know you're not saying lacto rhubarb you're saying salt fermented rhubarb it's just a different way of communicating that just makes it a little bit more understandable for people absolutely mm -hmm. um that's my first menu writing i've got a couple of these we can go to the next one <laughs> Um, right. So we obviously are living on Instagram right now. It's like how I communicate. <laughs> um, so if, if you're like, if somebody's purchasing a drink and I know Corey, you touched on this a second ago, so I'm just going to be super quick about this. Um, they're going to buy like based on the photo, you see a beautiful drink, go buy in a bar. Just like you said, just make sure that your drinks like this is a, this is a photo of a daiquiri. This is taken from liquor.com. Um, but you can see that like, it's opposite colors on the color wheel. You've got a little pop of green in there. Like it is just a liquid in a glass. It looks like a daiquiri, but there are ways of like really using the color wheel to your advantage if you're taking your own photos to make sure that like it looks icy cold, you know, get a little spray bottle uh, and fill it with, if you can fill it with glycerin um, or just like some cheese bitters uh, <laughs> uh, and water. Ooh. <laughs> and then just give it a, a little like spray on the outside. Um, yeah. You can also like fill it with a little bit of alcohol like, and it'll just like make it look like it's frosty and nice. And I know that that's like yeah. a photography 101 thing, but I had to learn that shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we can go to the next slide. God, I hope I don't get in trouble for that. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So what I really like doing to make sure that once the bottle leaves my prep room and gets into somebody's hands is that how to make it is communicated at every turn because people will watch um 
the home cocktail videos uh, while they're waiting for the, the item to be delivered. But once it's delivered, they have something tangible and they're not gonna look at that video. So you have to make sure that uh, the thing is like, what we do is we write it in the description on the website. Uh, we write it, write it on the back, back of the bottle. And then we also have the how-to video so that at every turn, like no matter where, whether there's somebody who really likes watching online videos, I personally don't, um, or they like just reading something, which is like kind of my format, Luddite, um, <laughs> that they have. <laughs> that I they love have that a word. word. That's such a Canadian <laughs> word. <laughs> I is love it? it. My family says that word. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> It's very funny. <laughs> um, so yeah, so just keep like if you if you have a video, keep it under two minutes. Keep it like super snappy, you know, like tell a joke. Keep it fun. Keep the language sort of within the brand if you can. Um, I usually like to try and have a lot of energy and be like quite bubbly. It it just matches it matches the Supernova brand. Whether you know if, unless you got like like Bar Chef, which has got like super slick, you know formal branding and then they do their have to how to but menu uh videos in a bar with like you know the the buckled up bartender that looks like super slick that's just not my brand yeah. um so just make sure that there's like continuity through everything go to the next one is that the end oh <laughs> like, i'm pretty sure i got one more. um Right, and so the 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 list of stuff when I always when I put the list of stuff what's exactly in the kit I don't put it in the description because ain't nobody gonna read that like they read the like what's in the drink and then if it's like another step down which is just how Shopify has their basic if you're doing like the debut layout like just like the basic one that we have um, also the free one yeah. um, <laughs> it just it puts it below the price so that once people get to the price and, and like add to cart like nothing gets read under there. So what we've done is we just like make it cute, put it in your branding and just say, hey, this is what it includes. And then you can just put it right up in your photos. Um, and then once you do that, what's your, what you're gonna wanna do is you can click on the photo in, in Shopify and edit alt text and just describe exactly what um, what the either what the photo is and then what your kit includes and that'll help your website SEO as well. Let's just tie that back to the start. Yeah. Easy, right? Very easy. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you're laying all of this out so um, perfectly for people who don't do this to understand it. And I, I think that that's, I mean, it's amazing. Everything, I'm just like, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm not saying much <laughs> because everything is so good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yay. Uh, okay, we can go to, right, ah, the next the next phase of things. Um. So I know, I know that like we touched on this briefly earlier. Um, I am going to keep Send a Negroni around because it is it has become this thing that is like it's a little bit more inexpensive. I've noticed people that are buying them as birthday presents and they're selling them to like um, places in Ontario that are a little bit further to reach um, so that people can still send a, like a little birthday present or like a nice gift or like realtors do it a lot. <laughs> as kind of like a, thanks for buying a house. Yeah. It's a Negroni. <laughs> um, so I do see brand, um, I, I see length with that one. Dolly Trolley is much more local. We only do, you know, the greater Toronto area. So once bars open up, you know, it's gonna be a part of people's culture to just wanna go out. So you, there's not the distance involved. And also it's a little bit more of an investment to like buy a $65 cocktail kit when they could just go spend 65 bucks at a bar and have a number of drinks in an environment with other people. Right. Um, so I do see that like, it doesn't have as much, um longevity as some other things but like i said earlier i i want to keep the branding i want to keep that kind of alive so what we're doing is we're uh and this is like super sneak peek i haven't even announced this week. um we are <laughs> um we are moving dolly trolley into a um distillery partnership and we're going to be able to sell into other cocktail bars so um because the brand has become so strong, um, we're going to be yeah. able to, uh, yeah, in in higher volume places where, you know, they might not have cocktail programs, so they can just buy a bottle and, and have and mix it with citrus and teach, you know, we come teach the bartender how to do it, and yeah. it just kind of uh, increases increases our reach a little bit. So I think I think reach is a huge thing. That's so um, great. Mm -hmm. 
This label is different. It is. So this was our original label <laughs> uh, <laughs> before we got a reach out from Miss Parton herself uh, that said, y'all are using my face. Pick it up. <laughs> I mean, just to have that happen is worth the risk, in my opinion. <laughs> it happened over Christmas as well. So I like, I was really tired. I just finished like a ridiculous day. I opened up my email, emails and I was like, I'm framing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's so wait, she actually sent you an email or was it her legal team? Her legal team. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Still a very cute label. <laughs> very cute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but definitely worth it to go to Kassira and be like, hey, help us out. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, just so that you guys know, we are running over a little bit on time. So um, if anyone has to leave, please, um, you can rewatch this again. But we're going to continue, obviously, um, until the end. So, Kelsey, please. <laughs> oh, I, actually, you know what? We are. Is that it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke too soon. I spoke too soon. I'm so sorry. No, um, that was perfect. Well, listen, I mean, all of this has been so um, informative, but also everything is so well thought out. I think that you've got a lot going for this business. I mean, it's just everything is just so um, laid out perfectly. And I think that the reason we didn't have so many questions is simply because you're so thorough. So um, I know that everybody on here probably appreciates it, but I just have to say a few more things. Um, if you want more distance learning classes like this, again, please follow Portland Cocktail Week on Facebook. And all of our classes are archived there, but if you're not on Facebook, they're also on YouTube. I know there's some people out there that are like, oh, I don't do Facebook. Um, so it is on YouTube as well. Um, and then please follow uh, PDXAW on Instagram so you can um, see what's coming up there. Also, me, Ancho Hancho, um, you can see what's going on with me in Montalobos and Ancho Reyes, Campari Community. Um, also, Kelsey at Kelsey Ramage. I'm, I'm saying this too fast, I think, for Dave. He's can't get it, he can't get it out fast <laughs> enough. <laughs> um, but uh, anyways, um, again, thank you, Kelsey, for taking the time to do this with us today. Um, I think that a lot of people got a lot of uh, informative um, uh, business mind stuff from you today. <laughs> I hope so. There's a lot and, of that. and numbers and numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Oh uh, really no, pleasure, no, it's been a pleasure for me too. Thank you so much. And again, everybody, have a great day. Thank you for stopping by, and we'll see you next time.